Hey guys, it's World War II Studios, and today I'm going to be doing my uh, 326 Glider Infantry gear for the 101st Airborne. I'm going to be doing a couple like impressions in this video. Um, I'm going to be doing a Normandy impression, like just landed, and then I'm going to be doing a couple days into the battle, and then also a later war impression, and then at the end I'll kind of go through some of my personal items so um, you can see what I carry. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Alright, so this is uh, my Normandy impression. I'll do a uh, more in-depth in just a second. I just want to uh, give you guys a bit of a background. So, um, I'm portraying 326 Glider Infantry uh, Engineers 101st Airborne, uh, A Company. So, they actually landed on Omaha Beach um, a bit after like the main battle had taken place. So, they landed there and their main uh, landing craft with all of their gear and like supplies uh, sank on the way there. Um, I'm not sure if it hit a mine or um, what happened to it, but it never made it to the shore. They found a German supply depot where they grabbed a lot of explosives and things like that. They were engineers, so I'm wearing a bit of engineer gear, not too much. Um, actually, in the engineers, there was always a machine gun squad that would lay uh, fire down for the engineers. So, um, yeah, I'm wearing a bit of engineer gear, but not too much, just because I don't have um, too much explosives or things like that yet. All right, so I'm um, starting off with my rifle. Uh, this is what I'll be using for all of my impressions. Yeah, so it's just my uh, 1942 rifle. Um, yeah, you guys have seen it in quite a few videos before, so I'm not going to go too in-depth on it. Um, it was just a standard issue rifle for the uh, military at the time. Okay, so this is my helmet that I'm using right now. Um, it is my uh, original shell. One of them I got another recently, but uh, I'll show you that in another time. So I've got my engineer marking with A Company, and uh, yes, this is, I didn't like paint over an original helmet. Uh, this was refinished by Jerry Murray, so um, yeah. And then I've got a new liner chin strap on here with the early war, uh, not sure if you can tell, now, but it's painted green, which is the earlier war ones. Later war, they were painted black. Just have my chin strap uh, across the back. And then, uh, as you can tell on my liner, I'm using a paratrooper one, which was also redone by Jay Murray, uh, just because I don't have an infantry one yet, which is pretty annoying. All right, so for my uniform, I'm just using my basic wool uniform underneath this. Um, I've got my enlisted wool shirt on here underneath, and then my wool trousers. Yeah, the pants and shirt are original wools, and then my leggings and roughouts. Uh, the leggings are original, so our, our, the roughouts are reproduction. Then I'm wearing my M41 field jacket, which uh, was still the standard jacket for the army at the time. Um, yeah, it's not that great of a jacket with only the two pockets always buried underneath your web gear. So um, it's really good that they switched to the M43. Uh, it's a lot better. It's a combat jacket, but uh, this is what they wore at the time. And then I've got my 100 for Airborne patch on here, which I did get a uh, reproduction uh, World War II one. So it looks accurate instead of the Vietnam ones that I was using before. So I am still wearing my gas press art at the time because uh, this was pretty soon after they landed. So they hadn't really thrown them away till a bit later when they realized that uh, they weren't going to be needing them. So I am wearing my M6 gas mask bag over here as well, which they would have uh, landed with the gas mask in there. But lots of people threw the bag away and then also lots of people just kept them to keep random stuff in, uh, which is a really good bag for it. All right, so for my web gear, um, my cartridge belt here, which is my later war one with the OD7 um, color, but it does have the snap, so it is a World War II one. Um, OD7 in transitional gear was starting to be issued in at this time. Um, you'll see a bit of it in Normandy, not too much. I am probably wearing a bit more than what most people would have had. Uh, that's just because I don't have all khaki stuff right now. But I am working on it. So yeah, so this is my uh, later war cartridge belt. And then uh, I've got an at the front bandolier here. Uh, I don't have it all the way loaded right now just because I didn't feel like putting uh, stuff in there. And then, um, yeah, so underneath my gas mask bag, I've got my bayonet here, um, which you guys have probably seen before. But it is my uh, original bayonet, sort of. Um, it's the Greek bayonet and then the original scabbard. And then I also have my uh, Carlisle pouch back here as well. And then I have my wire cutters here, which lots of engineers use them because um, lots of their stuff was just getting rid of like German barbed wire and just road blocks and stuff. 
So the wire cutters is uh, 1951 dated, um, I believe from Denmark. And then uh, the pouch is 1942 dated. So then over here I've got my canteen, which um, as you can see is an original army one. Um, yeah, so the canteen is in there, it's 1944, I believe, and the cup is like a 1944 or 45, I don't remember right now. And then the cover doesn't have the date, well, it's just worn off. So this is my original haversack, um, it's 1942 dated, and, and then the shovel cover is also an original transitional one, and then the shovel is original as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it for my uh, D-Day impression. I am going to go put on the rest of the gear, or well, I guess it's mainly taking stuff off for a bit later, just a couple days into the Normandy invasion. So as you can tell, um, it's not too much difference, but uh, there's a bit of different stuff. So um, yeah, like I said, this is just my bit later, a um, couple days into Normandy, um, or even a couple weeks, you know, it's kind of, didn't really change that much after they got into the battle and they realized what gear they didn't need to carry and stuff so um yeah so i'm just gonna kind of get into it right away obviously my rifle so then my helmet yeah so as you can tell i added a helmet net and uh that's just because it's uh, the two and a half inch square helmet net um which was taken off of vehicles this was the same netting that they would use to camouflage vehicles um, yeah, so it would be something that some people would do if they wanted a bit more camouflage. They would just chop a square off of a vehicle. Yeah, so as you can tell, I'm just wearing the same uniform. I just unbuttoned it. Uh, it just gives it a different look. And then uh, you can see my wolves a bit better now. Yeah, so some people would just take off their M41 jacket and wear it through their cartridge belt. Um, that was also very common. I just didn't uh, feel like doing that. So I'm still wearing it. I uh, just uh, have it unbuttoned. But then uh, my cartridge belt, I'm still wearing the exact same stuff in the same spot so I didn't feel like moving any of it and I kind of got everything situated where I wanted it um, before the video so yeah so I dropped my um, gas brass art and then also took out my M6 gas mask bag which um, most people would have dropped the gas mask bag but also lots of people would have just dropped the haversack instead and just carried the gas mask bag um, that was a bit more of a later war thing which is what you'll see later and um, yeah, so I'm just still wearing the haversack, just, and uh, lots of people would have also just worn it as a backpack and uh, just taken it completely off the cartridge belt, which um, I just didn't feel like doing right now. So I think that's pretty much it for this um, impression. I'm going to go put on the later war impression. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is kind of like my late war impression. Um, yeah, so it's lots of the same stuff, but I also took a lot off. And yeah, so um, obviously still just using my rifle. So my helmet, uh, I just take off the helmet net and then the liner chin strap as well. Uh, it just gives it the nice late war look. So then my uniform, I just took off my uh, M41 field jacket and put on the M43. Uh, this is an original jacket. I don't really have too much in the pockets right now just because I didn't feel like putting tons of stuff in there. But um, well, most people would carry quite a bit of stuff in there, like hair rations or just, you know, random things. And then I'm also still just wearing my leggings and rough hats. Uh, lots of people were issued the double buckle boots, but I don't have any. But I mean, lots of people still just use the rough hats and leggings. So for my web gear, I did pack uh, pretty light. Uh, so I took off the haversack and then, um, yeah, so I'm just using the cartridge belt. And then I did take off my bayonet as well. You don't really use the bayonet too much, especially in Europe. So then uh, I just moved my wire cutters over there instead, that way it's just out of my way. And then, um, yeah, so I'm still just wearing my canteen and then my Carlisle pouch um, back there as well. And then uh, instead of a haversack, I'm just wearing my M6 gas mask bag, which I've uh, put tons of random stuff in there, which I'll go through in just a minute. So, um, yeah, so I'm not wearing a shovel either, which uh, most people would have carried the shovel still. But um, I'm just not carrying it uh, just because I didn't really want to wear too much. I didn't want to take out the haversack either. So um, that's pretty much it for the impressions. And now I'm going to go through some of the personal items that I'm carrying. Okay, so I'm going to go through my personal items. So uh, in this pocket here, I just have some airmail that I made. And then um, a newspaper, which is reproduction. Um, all the stuff, basically, I carry as reproduction just because I don't want to wrecking the original um, paperwork or anything, I would be getting it wet or something like that. And then uh, I have a little Bible. And then, uh, yeah, so then in my gas mask bag, I just kind of stuffed everything. 
Um, most of it would end up being carried in the gas mask bag, but I just kind of put everything in there so you can kind of see what they would have carried in the pockets and stuff like that. So we've got a couple uh, D rations, which I made. I already ate them, so I just have empty boxes and I'll refill them uh, if I go to another event. Just have some extra ammo boxes, which I made. Reproduction magazine. I am carrying a couple original items, like um, a field manual for um, first aid which I have read through. Yeah, so I've got my sewing kit out here as well, which is an original. So I do have a couple early war K rations. Um, I just don't have them filled right now, obviously, because I'm not going to any events. Um, just some random, lots of random ration parts, which I've made over the years. And uh, some camel cigarettes, which um, most people would have had. So I do have like a journal and some original pencils. Uh, just random stuff that wasn't issued to people, but uh, lots of people would have had is good to really make your impression good. Um, I do have so like some original games, which I don't really take to events, but I just wanted to show it to you guys. Uh, here's a reproduction uh, set of aviator playing cards to identify the airplanes. Uh, then I have a reproduction uh, Red Cross playing cards box. Um, some original stuff that I do carry, the rifle cleaner stuff, then some original sunscreen. I'm not really too sure that they would have carried this in like Europe, but uh, I would guess that this was used a lot more in the Pacific, just because of the heat and um, everything down there. Um, yes, yeah, so I have a U.S. comb, uh, and then I just have lots of random like rations and just old paperwork sets and stuff that I. Obviously, they wouldn't carry all of this stuff, but it's just kind of a whole bunch of random stuff that everyone would have carried a bit of. So, um, it really can make your impression a lot greater if you have some of it. And it really isn't too hard to make. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was uh, kind of different and probably a bit longer than the other ones. But, um, yeah, let me know if you liked it. And I don't really have anything else planned now. I guess I do have a couple dress uniforms that I am still working on, but um, those aren't too much of a priority for me, just because I don't uh, use them at too many events. But um, yeah, so let me know if you guys have any other things that you'd like me to do, and I'll see you guys next time.